Cliff City fam, what is up? It is Bobby on the north side of Chicago about to go in the grocery store for the ultimate guide to shopping when you have diabetes and you're on a diabetic diet. We're gonna cover every inch of the grocery store from fresh produce, meat, the middle aisles, dairy, all the good stuff. So I show you the best quality items and products to put in your body when you're on a low sugar, low carb, diabetic diet. You don't have to sacrifice quality. You don't have to sacrifice flavor anymore because there's some next level products upstairs, but I'm going to show you what to buy, what to avoid, and why in detail. Before we get rocking and rolling, you know the drill. Like, subscribe, share. All those things are lovely, but right below the video is a bell. You're going to want to enable all notifications on my channel because every single week we have like six videos going live, three videos, three live uh, cooking streams where we make a recipe from start to finish. It's a lot of fun. All right, let's mask up. Let's go shopping and do our thing. Let's navigate our way through the produce section and find the best veggies and fruits for a diabetic diet. I love this uh, fruit and veggie section here at Whole Foods. It's just so colorful, it really makes me happy. What makes me happy also is avocados. Avocados are a very fiber rich food. They also have a lot of yummy fat, really, really good fat for you. And what do we talk about? Foods that are high in fiber are prebiotics. They're very good for the uh, tummy bacteria. Avocados are fantastic for a diabetic and a keto diet. It's actually one of the most fiber rich foods here in the produce section, but probably the most fiber rich food in the produce section is right here. It's the artichoke. The artichoke just looks like it has a lot of fiber. It looks like something that's gonna be a colon cleanser. It goes through your system, just getting all the stuff out of there and pushing it through. The thing is, it's very hard to prepare this and it's kind of a pain in the butt because all these leaves on the outside are inedible. So you have to shave it down to get to the heart and then steam it or boil it. The thing is, if we go to the middle aisle section, I bet we can find a much easier and more consumer friendly version of the artichoke. Let's go over there really quick. There we go. This is what I was talking about. These are artichoke hearts, usually baby artichoke hearts, in water or in oil. All of that hard work has been done for you, so it's much easier to consume. And these are just artichokes with water, sea salt, and a little bit of citric acid as, as the preservative. That's totally fine. But look at this. We're talking about three grams of fiber for a one serving size is one jar. Very, very nice. The thing is, careful when they're marinated and put in oil. If the oil's not olive oil or extra virgin olive oil, run forest run why because this one here let's see is packed in sunflower oil sunflower oil like we talked about is inflammatory highly processed plant-based oil plant-based oils that are processed spike your cholesterol people with diabetes oftentimes have high cholesterol so if you can't find it with uh extra virgin olive oil or olive oil just go for the ones packed in water you're good to go let me check the fiber on this one this one has four grams of fiber for three pieces. Yeah, that seems higher. For some reason, this one seemed low. Very, very fiber rich food. We're officially gonna call uh, artichokes the colon blow of the fruit and vegetable section. This stuff is dynamite. Green leafy vegetables are your friend. They're generally low in carbs and they're very high in fiber. One of my favorites is kale. Oh, they don't have it today. I usually stay away from the green curly kale because it's a little too uh, fibrous and rubbery. The lacinato kale is a little bit better, but you always want to get organic kale. That's on the dirty dozen. Uh, spinach is always on the dirty dozen, but you want to get organic, but it's very high in fiber. All lettuces, to be honest, when you get romaine, red leaf lettuce, uh, what's that over there? A little bit of escarole. Always get those organic because they tend to be high in pesticides and chemicals. One vegetable that's very high in fiber and low carb is broccoli, but you don't have to get organic broccoli. Broccoli has a natural compound in it that prevents bugs and insects from attacking it, so they spray it less. You can actually get conventional broccoli. Uh, you can get conventional cabbage. You don't have to splurge for organic, and that's loaded with fiber, another gut-friendly food. Cauliflower, just like broccoli, uh, has that natural compound in there. You don't have to get uh, organic. Fantastic for making uh, a rice substitute. You just want to stay away from the starchy vegetables, like your butternut squashes, like the potatoes over there, sweet potatoes, all that stuff, all the yams, asparagus. Asparagus is fantastic and you don't have to get organic asparagus either because you usually shave away the bottoms of the stalks here and that's where any of the chemicals would live. So no need to splurge for that. Don't have to get organic Brussels sprouts, which are high in fiber too. 
They have that natural compound just like the cabbage does. So there's a really a lot of options here. And once you know what to get organic and not to get organic, which is very important, because the dirty dozen ones are very, very dirty, you're home free. Would you ever think that chocolate could be part of a diabetic's diet? And the answer is yes, because dark chocolate is actually high in fiber, antioxidants, and a bunch of other good nutrients. But not all dark chocolate is created equally. So look at this. This is organic dark chocolate. It says 57% cocoa. The thing is, I believe that to be legally called dark chocolate, it has to have a minimum of 55% cocoa. So this is barely there. So the only issue with this is we look at what's going on here, and per serving, there's still 14 grams of added sugar. Now listen, when you're on a diabetic diet, 14 grams of added sugar is too much. So even though it's technically dark chocolate, I would go for a higher cocoa percentage. We come down here, here we go, 68. That's a little bit better. And it has almonds, which are high in fiber too. Look what happens. The sugar goes down a little bit. Not as much as I'd want to see because still 68% is good, but I think we can do better. What kind of better? There we go. Look at this. 85% exquisitely rich dark chocolate. Look what happens to the sugar. Boom goes the dynamite. Down to four grams of added sugar and four grams of fiber, which is fantastic for a three serving uh, bar. That is really, really good stuff. Now, if you want to avoid sugar altogether, we live in a new uh, century that has some really, really exciting stuff, such as this. This is keto nut butter chocolate bars. This is crazy because number one, it's tasty. I have this at home right now. Number two, oh, number two, it's open already. So don't buy this one exactly, but look what's going on here. We have five grams of fiber and zero grams of added sugar. How do you do that? Well, look at these next level ingredients. First of all, everything's organic. They're adding a little bit of Jerusalem artichoke fiber there, which is great because it jacks up the fiber and they're sweetening it with monk fruit extract. This stuff is literally delicious and maybe one of the most healthy, nutrient-dense keto chocolates on the market. So that's great. Once again, not that one. Uh, if you want something a little different here, go for Lily sugar-free dark chocolate. So check this out. This is extra dark, sweetened with stevia. So we look at the ingredients. See that inulin right there? Inulin is a uh, fiber supplement, so that's going to jack up the fiber. And I don't mind the soy lecithin, uh, lecithin. That's an emulsifier. It's non-GMO soy. It says it here somewhere. There we go. Non-GMO soy, very common in certain chocolates. But zero grams of sugar, 10 grams of fiber. That's amazing. So you have some options if you want to avoid sugar completely. If you want sugar, just go for the highest percentage cocoa you can get. And remember, not all chocolate is the same. Look for the highest percentage of chocolate around. But man, oh man, there's some really exciting stuff in the chocolate world. Just because you're diabetic, you don't have to cut it out. If you're going to eat pasta on a diabetic diet, you really want to avoid the traditional enriched wheat pastas. Those are made with white wheat flour that spike the crud out of your blood sugar and offer no nutrition. You're going to want to live in the alternative pasta section, usually made of brown rice and legumes and stuff like that. And you want to go, you're going to want to go with the most nutrient dense, high fiber pasta on the market. And that's made from red lentils. Red lentils or chickpeas are just fantastic because you look at the macros. Look at that, you guys. Protein off the charts, but fiber, a nine gram serving of fiber in a three ounce portion is fantastic. And I believe the chickpea pasta should be the same. Yeah, three ounces, nine grams. So why is that important? Well, when you're going to have carbs, number one, you do have to limit them. But number two, you want to have ones that are made with whole grains like these because they're not going to spike your blood sugars nearly as much as the other pasta. That being said, let's say you want pasta, a really indulgent dish, and you don't want to spike your blood sugar at all. Well, you still don't want to eat these made from legumes. There is one pasta that's almost zero carbs, has a ton of fiber, and it lives in the refrigerated section. Let's go check it out. It's one of my favorites. All right, here it is. I know they always have it at Whole Foods and usually in Walmart super centers. It's either in the produce section or right here in the vegan section. And this is it. It's called Pasta Zero. Now there's a lot of shirataki noodles on the market, but I find that Nasoya Pasta Zero is the best. So what makes it so good? Well, number one, there's spaghetti shapes or fettuccine. But look at these macros, okay? There's two servings in a bag. To be honest, it's more like one serving, but there's two grams of net carbs times two servings. There's only four grams of net carbs and a whopping six grams of fiber in this whole bag. 
What's so cool, the ingredients are also clean as a whistle here. It's made with konjac flour. And something like this is also known as a prebiotic. Foods that are high in uh, fiber are prebiotics and they feed your gut bacteria. So in addition to not spiking your blood sugar, it fosters good bacteria in your gut. And I'm all about that. I really believe the backbone to healthy living is a good gut bacteria and flora. I use this a lot in my still number one best-selling keto meal prepping cookbook. If you're looking for diabetic friendly recipes and keto recipes, I'll put that link down below. You guys, still after 15 months now, it's a number one bestseller on Amazon, all because of y'all. And we have a bunch of really cool recipes using this and spaghetti squash that are great for diabetes and diabetic diets. So look for these. They're a fantastic pasta substitute that won't spike your blood sugar at all. We have entered the breakfast aisle and they always say that you should eat whole grains that are really rich in fiber when you're on a diabetic diet. Why is that? Because the fiber actually moves through your system very slowly and it prevents your uh, blood sugars from spiking. The thing is, something like oatmeal still has a lot of carbs, so I would really limit the amount of oatmeal in your diet. If you're gonna eat oatmeal, there's a couple of guidelines I like to follow. Number one, don't go for any flavored kinds because anytime you see something like maple pecan or any flavor, that always means there's added sugar. And when you see eight grams of added sugar, that's two teaspoons of added cane sugar. That is not good for you at all. So always go for plain. And then that brings me to point number two. Always look for, if you can, steel cut oats because a lot of people don't realize steel cut oats compared to rolled oats have a little more fiber. So this is the serving size for one serving of rolled oats has three grams of fiber and one serving of steel cut should be higher. Let's see here. Yeah, it has four grams. So you're probably gonna to wanna to get the quick cooking steel cut oats and please always get organic oats, whether you do the rolled oats or the steel cut. See, these aren't organic. What's the problem with that? Well, oats actually score high in glyphosate. Glyphosate is the active ingredient in Roundup. Why the heck would Roundup be sprayed on oats? Well, they're sprayed on oats because they're used as a desiccant, a drying agent to dry out the oats at the end of the growing process to make it easier and quicker to harvest. Because of that, the glyphosate levels score high. You don't want that junk in your body. So go organic. But if you're gonna eat oats, I would supplement part of your oats with a low carb, high fiber item like one of these. Ch -ch -ch Chia seeds, the miracle plant that grows, or flax seeds. These are amazing because in addition to being low carb, they're loaded with fiber. Look at that, six grams of fiber, two grams of net carbs, and a ton of protein. So I would actually do maybe like half and half oatmeal and that, or skip the oatmeal altogether, get chia seeds, which have basically the same nutritional profile of the flax seeds, make chia seed pudding. I have recipes for dairy-free chia seed pudding, once again, in my keto meal prepping cookbook and on my blog. I'll put links down below. Uh, you can do a sugar-free keto chocolate chia seed pudding. You can do a low glycemic blueberry chia seed pudding. The point is you're gonna wanna limit the whole grains. It, supplement them with chia seeds and flax seeds and don't add any sugar or any kind of inflammatory items to the oatmeal and you're good to go. This is actually my favorite section of the grocery store, the cooking oils and fats aisle, because there's so many great fats and oils that didn't used to be at the grocery store in the 80s and 90s. And some of the best ones I think to cook with on a diabetic diet are grass-fed ghee, uh, all of these amazing uh, pasture-raised and grass-fed animal fats like duck fat, beef tallow, pasture-raised pork fat, virgin coconut oil is fantastic, and avocado oil, is another good one. And then down here, olive oil. Olive oil is great. And a lot of people ask me one of the best ones to cook with and finish with at the grocery store. And it's actually this, it's a USA California based company called California Olive Ranch. Uh, I've seen cheaper prices here and there, but this is actually a cooking EVOO and a finishing extra virgin olive oil. I actually cook with extra virgin olive oil, not like a top shelf bottle that costs a lot of money, something like this. Or if you're a Costco member, get the uh, big uh, organic Kirkland uh, extra virgin olive oil and cook with that and finish it if, if you want or just get a really good bottle of finishing oil like one of these like super small ones here uh, something like this this would be something you wouldn't want to cook with because it's very expensive you want to finish with that so why are those good why is he talking about fats we're not talking about uh, cholesterol we're talking about diabetes here that's because if you cook with oils like canola oil sunflower oil, soybean oil, safflower oil, stuff like these are actually very inflammatory. Why does that matter? Because 
inflammatory foods actually cause cholesterol, cholesterol spikes. People with diabetes oftentimes have high cholesterol. So when you're eating and using oils that have refined oils that are highly processed and highly inflammatory, you're gonna spike your cholesterol. Why is something like canola oil inflammatory? That's because it's processed at such high heat and usually uh, GMO, if it's not organic, it's inflammatory. You don't want that stuff in your body. And conventional canola oil uses hexane, a chemical, to extract the oil from the plant, making it inflammatory, making it raise your cholesterol, making it bad for diabetics. So stick with the heart healthier oils, the avocado oil, the coconut oil, ghee. Coconut oil is a good saturated fat. Don't believe the hype that it's bad for you and it makes your cholesterol go up. It actually makes it go down. It's a very, very special oil. Bottom line, have inflam low inflammatory oils, avoid the processed plant-based oils, get the ones I just recommended. I've talked about the benefits of 100% grass-fed beef many, many times. Grass-fed beef is not only better for the cow, the farmer, the environment, and for you because the nutritional profile is better, it's also beneficial to a diabetic diet because when you see something that says 100% grass-fed or grass-fed and grass-finished, it has to say one of those two things, otherwise it could be finished on grain. If it only says grass-fed, it has more conjugated linoic acids. Those are actually a very beneficial, uh, beneficial compound that's good for people with diabetes. So when you're at the grocery store, just look for it. I always get the higher fat percentage. This is 85% beef to 15% fat, and it's a little cheaper than the lean, uh, what is this, 95.7. You're probably gonna overcook that. And like I said, the fat in here is healthy. It's actually good for you because it's pasture raised, never eaten grain. Why is that better than something that's grain fed? Because when you have traditional uh, ground beef that's grain fed, they're eating GMO soy and corn. Those are inflammatory uh, feed. And because of that, the nutritional profile of grain fed cattle is lower than grass fed. It's available everywhere now. You can get it even for way better prices than this for many reasons, including diabetes purposes, go for grass-fed ground beef. It doesn't have to be organic necessarily. It just has to say 100% grass-fed or grass-fed and grass-finished, way better than corn-fed, grain-fed, GMO beef. Yogurt is something that's very, very tricky because there's hidden sugars lurking in 99% of the yogurts on the market. So obviously you wanna get plain, unsweetened. But that also applies to simple things like vanilla. When you see something like vanilla at the grocery store, doesn't mean it doesn't have sugar. Look at this. This is organic, which is great for yogurt, vanilla. You guys, that's 16 grams of sugar for a three quarter cup serving. 16 grams of sugar is four teaspoons, four teaspoons of cane sugar in one serving. So you have to go plain. Organic is good, but you could actually do better. So what does that mean? Well, Here's Greek style plain. That's actually even better because what happens when something is Greek style? It's strained. What happens when you strain yogurt? Well, number one, you intensify the uh, protein, but number two, you remove the lactose. What lives in the lactose? The sugar. So Greek yogurt is inherently lower in sugar, but this is not, oh, it is organic, but we can do better. How can we do better? That sounds too good to be true. It's down here. This is by far what I think the best yogurt on the market. It's not only organic, it's not only Greek style, it's 100% grass fed. Grass fed dairy has the highest nutritional profile of any other dairy on the market because they're eating grass. Higher CLAs, higher omega-3 fatty acids, and it's whole milk yogurt. Whole milk yogurt is gonna have lower sugar. So because it's strained and Greek style, look at this. The total sugar here is five grams per three quarter cup. That's five grams of natural sugar. If it were unstrained, it'd have maybe seven or eight. So lower sugar, plus all those beneficial fatty acids and the saturated fat and Greek. You can't always get this at every grocery store. If you can't get it, just get organic Greek style whole milk yogurt. But I would honestly take a trip to somewhere like a Whole Foods that has this because it's worth it. Now, what if you're dairy free like me and you want your low carb sugar free fix? These guys got you covered. Kite Hill makes a Greek style almond based yogurt that is so good and good for you. So look at this. First of all, fibers off the charts, five grams of fiber per serving and three grams of natural sugar and 13 grams of protein. How do they do that? They do it by, here we go. This is how they do it. 
It's strained and has 13 grams of almond protein isolate in there. So really, really good stuff if you're dairy free or if you want uh, dairy, just avoid the sugar, go Greek style, go organic or grass fed when you can. I think most everyone on a diabetic diet knows you have to avoid traditional sodas because the sugars can be astronomical. But when this video is done, I want you to watch the video from yesterday when I talked about the worst artificial sweeteners on the market. So if you have diabetes and you're drinking Diet Pepsi and Diet Coke, I want you to stop because of, instead of adding sugar, they're adding aspartame and sucralose or Splenda. And those are devastating artificial sweeteners that are so bad for your health, your brain, your gut. So avoid those and go for something like Stevia sweetened soda. These guys are available everywhere. They have all these different flavors here. I would avoid any of the ones that have caramel coloring because caramel coloring is a known carcinogen. Stick with the regular soda here and it's sweetened with Stevia and it has natural flavors. They all have natural flavors. You can't avoid it. I'd rather you have natural flavors than fake sugar that's really devastating for your health. Stevia is not. Now, don't think that you can have something like this because this is Izzy and it's not sweetened with any sugar. You see zero grams of added sugar, but it's sweetened with fruit juice concentrate. 27 grams of sugar is still 27 grams of sugar. How much is 27 grams of sugar? It's over six teaspoons. So even though it's fruit juice concentrate, it's still gonna spike your blood sugar. So I would avoid something like this. Go for the zero calorie, zero carb stevia sweetened sodas. That's really what you want. And as long as you're in the snack food aisle here, what's, what's some of the best snack foods for a diabetic diet? It's gonna be chicharrones. Why? Well, first of all, they're darn delicious. They're crispy, fatty, and salty. But look at this, zero carbs. That's amazing. And they're actually not as high in fat as you think. There's five grams or five servings in here at uh, four and a half grams of fat per. That's just over 20 grams of fat, but there's no carbs. There's no starch. Any of the chicharrones that don't have added sugar, like you probably don't want the dessert ones, are gonna be good to go. And then I know a lot of people ask me about these. These are chicken chips. So on the surface, they should be diabetic friendly. But if I look at the carbs here, there's nine grams of carbs per serving, two servings per bag, 18 grams of carbs. Where is that coming from? This is chicken. Well, it's coming from the tapioca flour. They're covered in tapioca flour. But also look at this. They're fried or baked in sunflower oil and they have maltodextrin. Maltodextrin also is high on the glycemic index. It comes from GMO corn. So keep that in mind when you're looking at packages. And it's not a, in my opinion, high quality oil. It's expeller pressed high oleic sunflower oil. It's still a processed plant-based oil. It is better when it's expeller pressed, but processed plant-based oils like this are gonna be inflammatory. The maltodextrin is gonna be inflammatory and the tapioca starch makes it high in carbs. So it's not really a diabetic friendly chip, although you think it might be. I stick with the chicharrones, wash it down with some of that Zevia, you're good to go. All right, y'all, that is it. I got my groceries for the weekend. I'm good to go. That was nice, right? There's a lot of really top quality products and ingredients in the grocery store that are not only low carb, low sugar, diabetic friendly, but they have best in class ingredients. You don't have to sacrifice flavor or quality just because you're on the diabetic diet. If you wanna see more videos like this, please leave a comment down below. Let me know. I love making these videos for you. Once again, if you need really good diabetic friendly recipes, I'll put the link to my best selling 15, 16 month best selling keto meal prepping cookbook in the description box. Like, subscribe, share. The only way this channel keeps growing, the only way we keep helping people put the best quality stuff in their body is by you spreading that love. Two more videos are below me right now, but I will see you soon. Art, Desi, and Rose will see you soon. Until then, we leave you like we always do. Hashtag keep on cooking. Mad love and peace. Later.